All right, this is kind of a cool one. Uh, I'm Charlie Craven, and I am about to tie for you a pewter bra foam caddis. Um, this is um, a pattern that's been around a long time, and it comes from the Arkansas River, where Don uh, uh, guided for years and years and years and years. Um, and uh, this is a, a foam-bodied caddis light meant to match the uh, Mother's Day caddis that hatch in the springtime, about this time of year, April. Um, you know, they call it Mother's Day, but it seems like if you wait till Mother's Day, you probably missed it. So it's really more like the tax day caddis. Um, I was just down there this past weekend, and uh, um, it was still uh, wintertime uh, the day I went, so it was not very good. But uh, typically, uh, it's much better this time of year. And at any rate, this is the, uh, uh, the pewter bra foam caddis and how to go about tying it. So uh, I'm going to start with the Tiemco 100 SPBL. Um, this is a size 16. You can tie this on a regular 100, um, no problem. And I'm going to use some, some gold-colored Vivas 14 knot, um, kind of tannish gold. I'm going to tie you a tan one, so you know some thread that matches somewhere around there. And I'm going to start the thread just behind the eye. And I'm going to wrap back to about midpoint on the hook. And then bump my thread forward from there. And for the body, I've got a piece of 2mm foam that I've cut to about 2mm square. You can see that's maybe a little rectangular, um, but that's, that's what I was shooting for, is about 2mm square. Um, and what I want to do here is I want to come up to about the midpoint of that thread base and I'll tie that piece of foam down and I'll get a few turns over that front edge like so. And that foam is going to be our body. So I'm going to take that and cut that about a shank length long. Get my hand out of the way there. Like so. Um, now one thing that I do like to do to these, just because I don't like that square cut end, is I'll take and melt that just a bit. You can then pinch it, give it a little bit of a taper. I'm sure that makes all the difference in the world. That's probably why I catch so many fish. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's what it is. Um, so anyway, we just round that off a little bit. Simple, quick little guide fly here. Um, then I'm going to take some elk hair, and uh, yearling or cow elk will work either one. And you don't need a very big clump, but you do want some nice straight stuff. Um, I like to use hair that's a little bit lighter color, just makes the fly a little easier to see. And I'll take and clean this hair out real well. And I'll put them in my hair stacker. I love it when there's like a long quiet spot while I'm prepping this hair so you can't, you don't know what I'm doing over here. I'm just stacking it and cleaning it to make sure it's perfect. So once I've got that cleaned up nice and neat and perfect, got all my broken tips out, I'm going to take that little clump of hair. I'm going to measure it just beyond the end of the body. I'm going to bump my thread back here uh, right to the front edge of the body. And then I'm going to take my bobbin and spin it a bit so that my thread cords up into a rope. Now you don't want to go crazy with this, but round thread will bite into the hair better than, uh, than flat thread. So I want to cord it up a bit. I want that wing just a bit longer than the body. I'll hold it in place. I'm going to put one turn, next turn right behind that one, and then I'll tighten the thread toward me and flare those butt ends. And then I'll just start to work forward with constant tension all the way around the hook in small increments to bind that hair down. Uh, I'll close my fingers under the hook and sweep up, and that lets me get all those butt ends in one shot. And then I'm going to come in and trim those off as close as I can get them. And I cut my thread. Uh, now, that's not a big deal. That happens a lot. Uh, and I'm going to leave this in because I want you to, to see. See, nothing's unwinding. <clears throat> that's one of the reasons that your thread is waxed, is it won't come unwound when you cut it accidentally. Um, and I know some of you guys have been waiting for me to do that, because I usually hold that thread out of my way while I'm doing that. But... Some, something went awry there. Um, at any rate, when it happens, don't panic. It's no big deal. Take your thread, pick it back up. Probably fell under the table. You got to go get it. Start your thread right back on top of where it broke. Bind down that loose end. Cut your tag end out, and you're right back in action. Um, breaking thread is part of the game. You know, I I, uh, I joke and tease, and you know, the best way to not break your thread is not to pull so damn hard on it in the first place. Um, you know, breaking thread, and in that case, cutting thread, happens. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's a pretty easy fix. So uh, be a little more diligent about where you're cutting, and, and that won't happen as much. Mr. Craven, I was doing so good today. But I'm glad that worked out for you guys.
At any rate, so now uh, I've got that thread back in there, and I'm just going to continue wrapping over those butt ends. And I want to smooth these out a bit because that, this is going to become the base for our hackle. So you saw I went in there and kind of trimmed out into the extra loose ends. And that wing is in a nice tight little bundle right up on top. Then I'm going to pick up a hackle feather, and in this case I'll use a brown one. Um, you can use brown and grizzly, you could use, use black if you want a darker colored fly, you could use uh, gosh, any variety. Um, this is a, uh, a, a furnace feather, uh, this is actually a badger feather that I dyed, kind of an orangey brown, I like this for caddis. And I'm going to take this feather and strip the butt end, so I've got some bare stem there, and I'm going to tie this in <clears throat> right at the base of the wing. And I'm going to wrap forward over the stem right up to the hook eye, and then I'll run back again, just short there. And you can see I'm just taking steps here to smooth this thorax out so I don't have any big steps. Now we've got a tapered base to wrap that hackle down. Um, and if you've ever done this before, you know that as you start to wrap that hackle, it wants to kind of fall down this hill that we've created. Um, so I'll show you a trick for doing this. I showed the same trick on the uh, Chuck's Caddis variant, um, but I'm going to show you the same same trick here. I'm going to pick up my hackle feather. I've got my thread hanging right at the base of the wing. I've not moved it forward. I'm going to pick up my hackle feather. I'm going to make my first turn here at the base of the wing, and as I wrap forward, my th hackle feather is pushing the thread forward up to the hook eye. And when I get there, I'm going to lift the feather up and take a turn of thread around the hook to get it going the right direction again, and then tie the tip of the feather off with a couple turns. Make sure I got that all the way around there. Then I'm going to come in and trim my stem out of my feather, and I usually end up with a few little loose fibers there. So I'll trim those out as well. I'll sweep that collar back and just build a smooth little thread head. And then I can come in and whip finish. A little stub over here, we'll get rid of him. And that is Puderbaugh's Foam Caddis. Um, cool, simple little fly. Um, good buoyancy to this one. Um, doesn't take a lot of maintenance because of that foam body. You could dress it up a little bit. You could use maybe two different colors of foam. Um, you can make it as complicated as you want, but just as it sits here, uh, seems to work pretty darn well. The fly's been around a long time. I do like to, to have a long hackle collar on there just to give it a little bit more surface area, uh, but really a nice visible fly. Um, and again, a simple fly. So um, it's kind of a nice change these days as a fly that's not quite so complicated. This is an old fly. Um, the flies have gotten a lot, a lot more complicated since then, but this is this is still a good one. So kudos to Don Puderbaugh. And uh, if you're going to the Arkansas or any place else that there's caddis, uh, which is everywhere else, um, this is a good fly to have in your box. Give it a whirl. See what you think. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. I'll tie some more and we'll post some more videos pretty soon. So stay tuned. I'll talk to you.